Well, good morning and welcome to our service of spiritual communion here from St Mary's in Bletchingley. I'm the Reverend Phaedra Pampnell Green and I am the rector here. The Lord be with you. Well, this morning we are thinking about all saints and all souls. But I want to start with a poem that was written in 1624 by the poet John Donne. No man is an island entirely of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were as well as any manner of thy friends or thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. I am involved in mankind. Lovely words, aren't they? For whom the bell tolls, also known as No Man is an Island. John Donne explores the theme of life, death and the human condition. He addresses humanity, asking everyone to reconsider how they perceive themselves and their relationship to everyone else. And it's somehow that we all belong to each other. Christians believe that through our baptism we become members of the same heavenly family, members of a company of saints whose membership transcends death. If one hurts, we all hurt. When the bell tolls for one who dies, it tolls for all of us because we are all connected. But this family also includes all non-Christians who lived a good life sincerely in accordance with their con the convictions of their conscience. We simply don't know how many people we are talking about, but it must be a very large number. Put it this way, there is no way we can decide who has made a irrevocable choice of rejecting what is true and good and have chosen to alienate themselves from God forever. We don't know that. Hopefully, the number who have done that is small. So today is All Saints Day, November the 1st, and All Souls Day is November the 2nd, and both are about acknowledging this mutual belonging all Saints Day celebrates men and women who the Church has seen God's grace powerfully demonstrated in their lives and their deaths. These are the men and women we all know as saints. All Saints Day is an opportunity to give thanks for that grace and for the wonderful way it has shaped the Church and humanity. Their human lives often lived in difficult and challenging circumstances encourage us to live out our faith and trust in God, whatever we may be experiencing. All Souls Day celebrates the saints that have had a personal impact on us. It allows us to remember with thanksgiving before God those whom we have known more directly those who we have shaped, who have shaped our own lives, given us life, or who have nurtured us in faith. And so we stand before the throne of God with countless crowds from every nation and race, tribe and language. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Val is now going to read from 1 John chapter 3. A reading from the first letter of St John. 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Thank you, Val. We're going to hear from her a bit later on. But we are all part of this worldwide cosmic family, stretching from the beginning of time to the end of time. And the glue that holds us all together is God's love for us, our Heavenly Father. What enables us to recognize that love, to know that love, is when we recognize Him through Christ, being present in every aspect of our lives, from birth to death. It's then that we are able to experience hope and peace. We sing our first hymn with our choir, Lord of all hopefulness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we look at the lives of the saints and the hardships they endured, oppression, suffering, and even torture, none of them ever seemed to lose sight of the goal they set before themselves, which was Christ. I'm sure you've all heard of at least one saint. If you do, look them up, their life, what they did, why they became a saint, how they met their end. You see, as we look at the lives of the saints, they can encourage us. But more often than not, their lives remind us that we have got it so wrong. 
that we have failed God, each other and ourselves. So let us have a time of silence as we reflect on our own lives. The saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another in our thoughts, in our words and in our deeds. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past and give us the strength to serve you with clean hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All the saints are human, like you and I. They experience relationships, challenges, hatred, oppression, but they kept the light of Christ ever around them, ever before them. St. Patrick knew, like all the saints have known, that even if we are trying to do the right thing, especially if we are trying to do the right thing, the world we live in can sometimes seem to want to stop us and attack us. St. Patrick wrote a poem, a prayer, which has been called St. Patrick's Breastplate. And the words are from his heart and soul, understanding that his strength comes from Christ, his protection comes from Christ, and he needs Christ in every moment and aspect of his life. So let us hear St. Patrick's Breastplate. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief in the threeness, through the confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment day. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, in obedience of angels, in the service of archangels, in hope of resurrection, to meet with reward in prayers of patriarchs, in predictions of prophets, in preaching of apostles, in faith of confessors, in innocence of holy virgins, in deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me, from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and anear. I summon today all these powers 
between me and those evils, against every cruel and merciless power that may oppose my body and my soul. Christ to shield me today, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. today through the strength of heaven. Now Val will read our Gospel reading this morning, Matthew 5. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I may speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What an interesting reading for today, the Beatitudes. You could call them Jesus' charter for holiness, maybe even Jesus' mission statement, or perhaps his membership qualities. These are the values he expects all his followers to sign up to, to adhere to. Each of the Beatitudes begins with blessed are, and we could equally say happy are they, or fortunate are are they who? In other words, people who have the qualities are totally in the club. Because to have all these blessings means that we have arrived. We belong to the kingdom of heaven. And where is that? Above the clouds? Life after death? None of these. It is the sort of society God wanted here on earth that his son Jesus came to show us could be here if we live out these qualities, a place of truth and love, of compassion and justice, of peace and freedom and sharing. So why are these Beatitudes read today on All Saints Day? Well, the message from the Beatitudes is that we are blessed when we know our dependence on God and on our sisters and brothers in Christ, when we commit ourselves totally to the way that Christ
Christ invites us to follow. When we look at the Beatitudes in light of the saints, we may see all of them worked out in a saint's life. Equally, we may see one particular Beatitude and think of a particular saint's life immediately. So let's look at them again, these qualities. Being poor in spirit is an awareness of our basic poverty and fragility, that we need the help and support of God instead of being independent and fully in control of our lives. You know, it's all about me, I can do it all. Then there's being gentle, and that's about treating others with tenderness, constantly being aware of the needs of others. Being sorrowful is about grieving the loss of a loved one or a situation, but I think it's also about grieving the loss of faith and God in our society. Those who mourn would experience comfort from that loving Christian fellowship they have become part of. But it's also saying, I, I dearly want others to know the love of God. I grieve that they don't. Being passionate about what is right is about striving to ensure that everyone is given what is fair so that all can live with dignity and self-respect. The people that have this as their main value often pay the highest price for this. Then there's being merciful. I think this is about being compassionate to those around us. Being pure in heart is about being inclusive living without any kind of prejudice. It's interesting that these people are described as being able to see God because they see God's presence in every person and experience. Being a peacemaker is about helping to break down the barriers that divide us all, the barriers that create conflict between individuals or groups. These people are called the children of God and perhaps that's because they emulate most the work of Jesus here on earth. You know, he, he broke down the barriers that society had produced. Being persecuted in the cause of right is not a good experience and is often the beatitude that leads to martyrdom. But those who have the strength and courage to put the values of truth, love and justice far above their own survival are truly blessed because they absolutely know within their souls the love of God. In answer to all those, I want to say, wow, do you recognize yourself in any of those Beatitudes? Because these are the values Jesus has called his followers to have. They're not easy. <laughs> They're not easy at all, are they? And yet these are the qualities which have made the saints of old and will make us saints too. Look out for these values in our next hymn. Will you come and follow me?
So let us affirm our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. God of warmth and welcome, we come into your presence with wonder and praise. Caught up with the saints and the angels, we bring you ourselves and our prayers. We pray for all who hunger and thirst for what is right, for those who are prepared to stand up for justice and defend unpopular causes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the saints of Northumbria, for the vision of Cuthbert and the wisdom of Hilda, for the patience and trust of Aidan, for the poetry of Cademan and the faithfulness of Bede. We thank you for the humanity, for their mistakes and successes, for their love for you. And let us spend a moment to consider those we love and see no more, who have taught us, loved us and pointed us in the right direction. We think of those saints who have lived here in Bletchingly or, or our own communities, helping our communities, caring for our communities and righting wrongs in our communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peacemakers and for peacekeepers who live and work in places of conflict and for peacemakers who live in our own communities and homes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those known to us who are ill, or in trouble, or in any kind of need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, for those who with the saints are safe and joyful in God's keeping. Tell them we love them. Tell them we miss them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, called to be just and gentle, for our hopes, for our needs, for our dreams. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pilgrim God, Lead us homewards. May your saints encourage us, your angels guard us, and your little ones dance with us along the way. Amen. And we may not be able to come to church and take communion with others, but we can come to God and share our spiritual communion with him through the words of this prayer. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly 
love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen well, for some of us today's services are painful as we are reminded of the people we love and see no more. As we think of the saints who have personally shaped our lives, we will have a time to lift them to God now as we hear Ellie and Ollie bring us the song Autumn Leaves.
again she went away the days grow long reading began with see what love the father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are let us just think of that love for a moment John Donne's poem right at the beginning said I am involved in mankind we are involved in humanity because God has loved us enough to be in relationship with him, to be called his children. And so we are naturally brought into a relationship with others. We are involved, whether we like it or not, we are. No man is an island. None of the saints were self-made individuals. They were people who responded to a God who generously, generously lavished his love on them and us. Here and now, at this present moment, we are God's loved children, being transformed by his love if we allow it to, and we love him in return. But not all the transformation happens now. It's only when Christ returns and we meet him face to face that the rest will be revealed. Paul says that life with God is totally beyond our comprehension. So it's best to concentrate on how we live it now, allowing our lives to be a preparation for the completion of that love God has in store for us an eternity with him. Today then is a day we think of all those who have touched our lives near and far but are no longer with us. It's a day that reminds us how much God loved them and also loves us and that somehow we are eternally connected through that love. But it's also a day that points to the future, asking us to consider how the preparation for the future is going. And so we're going to finish with this beautiful hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
And so a final blessing for us all. Generous God, we thank you for the pointers and signs that remind us of your love, your constancy, and call us to action. We give thanks for those wise, wonderful, and often ordinary people who have altered the paths of our lives. And so may God, who cares for us, who stands with us, who inspires us. Bless us as we journey into the unknown. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.